I'm making some brake lines today. A smart person would probably wear gloves and eye protection. And, uh, I thought it'd be a good time to talk about something. Most older trucks have it. It's a LSPV, they call it. I know you know what that is, but, uh, that old feller in the corner over there, he probably doesn't know what a LSPV is. Well, that's a load sensing proportioning valve. Now, chances are, if you have one, you probably don't want to have one. It's just another thing to go wrong. Anyways, I'll be showing that in this video and I'll show how to bypass it. I won't be bypassing it myself today because... Well, we'll get into that later, but uh, I'm just making one, two, I'll, I'll be making three new brake lines, all three which go into this load sensing proportioning valve. One of the problems with these valves is if anybody wants to uh, raise their truck up, like put a lift in it, you, you're going to have to deal with this thing. I will be bypassing mine, but just not today, I don't have time. Or the money. You have to actually spend a bit of money to bypass it. I'll show you what it is. I got a brand new one here that I most likely won't even use. Now this is it. Just a, a cast block that three brake lines go into. One, one of the lines comes out of this and it goes to your back two brakes. Two of the lines come from the front of the truck and go all the way to the back of the truck and into this thing. Now, from the front of the truck, one of the two lines is your actual brake line. The other one is a return that returns the extra brake fluid to your front brakes. Probably not making much sense at this point. And what this thing does, it adjusts your back brake pressure according to the load you have in your box. Yeah, I don't know. It, it gives you more braking power the more weight you have in your truck on your back brakes. Now, if you're used to older vehicles, you might remember the uh, the master cylinders used to be split. They'd have a divider down the middle, and they'd split to front and back. Well, these don't have that. So, these things, when you run out of fluid, you have no brakes, or very little brakes. The other ones, you would run out of fluid in the front or the back, depending on where the leak was occurred. Uh... I like it better the old way. But anyways, I digest. We'll get back into that thing in a bit here. So the reason I'm changing the brake lines, well, Toyota was smart when they put these brake lines in. I'll give you a closer look at this. So this is one of the bad lines. Now what they did, is they put rubber all around the brake line. And it protects it. They still look like brand new underneath. Except for the ends. They stopped the rubber right here. And all the ends are just unprotected. There's a example of that right here. Completely rusted out. It's like that with all the lines under the truck. All brand new except for the ends. Anyways, that's why I'm replacing three lines today. Now what I'm using, this has a protective plastic coating too, just not as much. Um, I'll be using a roll of this. This is just 3 16 steel brake line with some kind of plastic coating. Now also, I'm going to be using a cool tool that I just received uh, lately. I just made a video about it, how to use it, and I show it all in the video. And I'll put that video like up there or up there or something in case you want to see how this thing works. This is it. 
the magazine is down here where you load it and you pull back the hammer right there oh no that's not how it works anyways this one here is made by Capri this is your double flaring tool and uh, yeah there's a video about that it's pretty cool and also in the other videos that the tiny little cutter that I use because you can use this in tight areas as you can see but for today I'm just running new lines and I'll show you how to bypass this thing if you ever feel the need to bypass one okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just start right here around the middle because the brake lines are like new underneath along the frame rail the two that I have to change going right to the back well, I'll cut them, I'll flare them, and then splice new ones on going back to that uh, proportioning valve. Guess I should stop talking and start doing, kind of avoiding that part. <laughs> okay, now hopefully you can see this. The, the brake lines, they run along this frame rail, and it's extremely tight, and they're all up above the gas tank. Well, in order to do this completely right, you'd have to drop the gas tank. We ain't doing that. It's not happening. So I'm just going to try to get that brake line to go in the direction I want it to without dropping the tank. I've done one line and this is where I've connected it here. And I'll just put it back into the old... Uh, clamps or hangers or whatever you want to call them. Now I have one more line to do, which is this one. So, uh, let's get to cutting it. Oh, and if you ever plan on doing this on a Toyota, and if you plan on bypassing that proportioning valve, then this bottom line is going to get taken out completely. You, you don't need this bottom line. You will only have one line running from the front to the back. That's all that's needed. So, so for what I'm doing, I'm just gonna cut it and put a new line from here to the back. So we start by cutting it around the same place as the other, maybe a little bit further one way so it lines up differently so they're not tight against each other. Easy. Done. Oh, now the ugly part. <laughs> constant dripping like I showed earlier there's that coating on here I gotta cut that coating off Uh, what I'll do is paint the ends to help them last a little longer, even though this is not permanent for this truck, so it doesn't really matter, but uh, the thing to do would be to get the proper rubber crap, or you can buy cans of that spray rubber stuff and just spray your connections to help them not rust is bad we have a huge problem here with uh 
with rust because they use more salt on the roads than I use on my vegetables. Now this is that proportioning valve I showed you. They have it tucked up in the frame rail where it rusts nicely. Uh, that's the one new line I've made. That's the other new line. I got one more new line to come in here. This line here goes out to your brakes, to your back brakes. So what you would do to bypass this thing would be take the top line here and run this line right to here to your back brakes. That way you don't need this bar here that comes down to your rear axle. You don't need none of this crap. Um, there is one thing you have to buy a manual proportioning valve and you put it under the hood in line in your to your rear brakes so your rear brake line would come out of your master cylinder go to the proportioning valve and then it would go from the proportioning valve back here now i've got that line more or less to where i gotta get it to it's gonna come up into here this is the line so i can take this stuff off and bend it accordingly yeah, so the reason, now, if you're putting a lift kit in your truck, you can't have this, this thing here. It would be out of adjustment when you, when your box, your frame raise, raises up, that thing would no longer be in proper adjustment. You could have it if you put an extension bar of some sort, but uh, it's kind of easier just to delete the thing and by putting a manual one underneath the hood they have a adjustment knob on them so you can adjust your back brakes the pressure of your back brakes to whatever you want reason i'm not putting one in today is that it's, it's a hundred bucks on the amazon the, the fairly decent one that they have there See, all these lines weren't leaking. There was one leaking. So I figured it's only a matter of time before the rest start leaking. So I might as well just do this today. Get it all done. Got any questions, just leave them in the comments. I will answer all. Well, there's absolutely no room, so you got to kind of make yourself comfortable and plan on being here for a while. And as far as like when I took the old ones out, basically I just had to cut the brake line and use a six point socket. And that's how, uh... oh, wait a minute, the six point socket worked for one of them. There was three that I had to take off. It only worked for one. The other two, I had to end up using vice grips. Now I know you know this, but for those that don't know, that's a brake line wrench. Preferable to use this. And now the reason I'm not uh, changing this proportioning valve is because it was still functioning. It was, the line was rotten right before the valve. But also if you can see these these two nuts here, they're completely round. <laughs> uh, the rust has just taken over with them. So that this thing isn't coming off without a, a zip disc, an angle grinder with a zip disc on it. Probably the best way to take it off. But then also then it's got this bracket right inside the frame as well that is gonna cause grief. So that would be a good reason to, to bypass this thing and just get rid of it. The only thing is that you, then you do have to worry about your back brakes locking up if you have like no load in it, no weight in it, 
when you lock your brakes on, the front would the front would come out, the back would lock up, and the front wouldn't. Not a big deal, I don't think. But then by putting the manual proportioning valve in the front, you solve that problem. One other thing I should mention is don't shower before you do this. Shower afterwards. I have to have another shower now. Okay, just have to finish this connection at this side here. done and it looks looks like it's supposed to be there well maybe not but it's there now